talk about setting up the new office that was so integral to the fourth season. Uh, that was my very first episode. Wow. And um, so I was new, along with my crew, to Mad Men. And um, I honestly thought if I couldn't do that set, I would not get past 401. <laughs> so um, it, it was just amazing to see everything come together. And, um, you know, Dan was incredibly gracious, you know, picking colors and stuff together. Um, just explaining and trying to show Matt different things. The one thing that was a big change for us is in the front reception. I don't know if you remember when we were going to do black furniture and you said, no, 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 primary colors. And we had like two and a half days to kind of change the furniture over into the primary colors. But it really made a much better statement than the way I was going. So. Dan, Dan really wanted this to feel like a modern office. We talked about it. We did it from scratch. We left the 50s, the high 50s, but the 50s. And this was, you know, it could have been cubicles, it could have been anything, but this was the introduction. And a lot of it was done with furniture and wall coverings and a plan from Dan and then this exquisite decor that Claudette picks, you know. And, uh, you know, I was taken in there like a homeowner. They like, they, 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 you know, like, are you ready to come see the set? Yeah. Stay away from the stage until she's ready. Don't go in there. And I just remember walking in there and just thinking, like, this is, I can't believe that this is real. You know, I can't believe that this, that they did all this in this short of time with this amount of money and made it look so real. It was really incredible. Is that why you decided to integrate it into the show like that and do that cool reveal? Well, we definitely knew it would be a big reveal because I actually felt this is the episode right after Shut the Door, Have a Seat. And I think that people were kind of questioning whether we would actually abandon that set because it's an expensive move and actually move, re relocate the agency. And um, David Carbonara, I mean, there's, we have to mention him. His music has been under everything that we've been watching here. The Carousel, he's been the composer since the pilot. And... Uh, the, the music is just like, you know, you get Nelson Riddle here. You get like the next era. You get a new vibe. And uh, Phil shot this, I think, was the director on this. And yes. I just remember like this anxiety about like, let's make a big deal out of it. And this piece is called The Arrival that David wrote. And it's one of my favorite. I, I can't believe, I mean, everybody's doing incredible things. But sometimes I, the music in particular, because it's so far from my skill set, I am literally the... That I'm not a musical person. I'm, I have musical taste. I'm just always blown away that I know somebody who could like do that and write it and record it, and that's like a human being that's walking around with us every day. <laughs> but <laughs> right, it's it's pretty awesome. But anyway, um, this was a big moment, and it was all done at once: the creative lounge, the clear story windows, all the wall coverings, every piece of it. And the funny thing, the primary colors thing, came from him, not from me. He had been pushing forever to put more primary colors in it. And I was like, I don't want it to be too graphic. I don't want it to look like the best of everything. I don't want it to have that Hollywood feeling. Tell me when it really arrived in like modern life. And Dan said at the time, he goes, I'm oh, probably not around until 1965, 66. That'd be early. That'd probably be about the right time. And I was like, remembered that. I was like, let me have it. <laughs> so blame Dan. <laughs> <laughs> or thank him. Oh, credit Dan. Or thank him. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dan.